And the real risk would be if, in the face of some difficult years, central banks say, oh, you know what, we weren't really able to hit 2%, so let's put it up to 3%, let's put it up to 4 that will completely undermine the future credibility of inflation targeting regimes because whenever some tough times come along, people in the markets, people in firms and households will think, well, why should I believe in this 2% inflation target or this 3% inflation target? Because last time we had a rough period, the central bank has just put the rates up. Today, I'm joined by Peter Westaway, former chief economist at Vanguard and policy advisor at the Bank of England and author of European Market Narratives, a monthly research series published by Header. Peter, welcome. Thanks very much, Brittany. So today I want to speak with you about central bank strategy, specifically in times of high inflation. Central banks have slightly different definitions of inflation targets. Does it make any difference which they use? I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference, but it is important to kind of understand the differences between them. So, for example, here in Europe, the UK and the euro area use kind of basket of goods definitions, the CPI, the HICP, whereas in the US, they use uh, what's more like a consumer's expenditure deflator. So that ad really includes everything that money gets spent on. Now, you might think that comprehensive measure would be the obvious thing to use. But the trouble is, maybe for credibility reasons, it's better to focus on the things that the average person spends their money on. So these CPI, HICP measures tend to just focus on that. But otherwise, they're very similar. And what about core measures of inflation versus headline measures, which include effects of commodity prices, you know, exchange rates? How does that difference come into play? Yeah, I mean, the core measures strip out some of these more erratic things that affect inflation. So, as you say, commodity prices, food price inflation has been very high lately. So what that leaves you with is a, a measure of inflation that tends to be much smoother. But importantly, it's a measure of inflation that central bankers have probably got more control over because it's typically the domestically generated inflation that, that is what the interest rates are really having an effect on. Because what happens is central bankers change their interest rates. That affects the amount of spare capacity in the economy. That then bears down on prices or pushes prices up. And that is, is really how, how central banks control inflation as well as they can. So correct me if I'm wrong, but does that mean that central bankers don't really care about non-core elements of inflation, you know, that are caused by commodity prices or food price strikes? Yeah, I mean, I think that the answer to that is yes and no. They don't care about them in the very short term, because in practice, when inflation suddenly soars up because of very high commodity prices or high food prices, it's completely impossible and unrealistic for central banks to put interest rates up quickly enough in order to stop that inflation going up. So what they will tend to do is they will, what is sometimes called, they will look through those temporary measures. But you know, in practice, they'll ignore it. And really what they're doing is that they're focusing on those core measures of inflation and really worrying about that and making sure that that measure of core inflation doesn't get out of control. Because they know that once the commodity price spike or the food price spike has worked its way through, that will come back to normal of its own accord, nothing really to do with what the central bank has done, and then inflation will be back under control. Now, you know, the danger with that is it, it looks as if they don't really care about those non-core measures. They do, but you know, the risk is that if the headline measure gets too high above core, that will start to affect pricing behavior by companies, it will start to affect wage setting behavior by wage earners and so on. And what could happen is that that, that temporary blip in non-core inflation might end up feeding through into more you know, core measures. That's the thing that central banks are really worried about. One of the things that central bankers worry about are second round effects, which I think you're hitting on. Can you explain what those are and why it tends to be a cause for concern? Yeah, well, second round effects are really important because if firms and households start to believe that inflation is 
no longer averaging, say, 2%, but it's starting to get up to 4%, 5%, and that that number is now the new norm, what that means is that their medium-term inflation expectations will drift up, and that will then start to become the normal level of inflation. So that's the thing that central banks are really terrified of. And so they maybe err on the side of being more hawkish, more aggressive with their interest rates to really send a strong signal that those second round effects are not allowed to feed through into inflation and that inflation has to stay at its normal targeted level. And look, inflation has been falling, but does this mean that you're now expecting it to fall even further from here and that interest rates will also start to be cut again? Yeah, I mean, broadly, I I do think that. I mean, it partly depends on which countries we're focusing on. Certainly, inflation is falling back pretty much everywhere now because the impact of high commodities, high food prices is starting to come out of the inflation numbers. And remember, commodity prices and food prices don't have to go back to where they originally were. They just have to stop rising. Even if they just stop rising, inflation will come back down because inflation is a rate of change, not a level. That's really important. But once they do, as far as interest rates are concerned, what we're going to start seeing is It will no longer be necessary for central bankers to start putting rates up and they would be able to pause and maybe start bringing them down again. Now, what we're seeing in the US, I mean, in a few hours time on the day that we're recording, we're almost certain to see the Fed putting up interest rates by 25 basis points. I think that's probably enough. That's probably enough for them. They'll be they'll be done. The messages coming out of the European Central Bank and the Bank of England is that they want to be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more hawkish, because they're a lot more worried about those so-called second round effects that I was talking about. They're worried that partly because of a bad experience over the last few months that inflation was coming in more strongly than expected, they're really keen to signal that inflation must not rise. In fact, I think on the basis of the last inflation number we saw, inflation's now starting to come in a little bit softer than people were expecting. And this is actually what I've been saying for some time. I think once headline rates start to come back down, so these inflation misses on the upside are going to get replaced by inflation misses on the downside. So I think what we're going to see is gradually market expectations of interest rates probably going to start getting a little bit softer. And we're going to see central banks cutting interest rates back from these these high levels that they've reached. With everything that you're saying, you know, I'll be even more forthright. You know, these banks are are not hitting the targets that they're setting. Does this undermine credibility? You know, should definitions or values change so that they can hit them in the future? I think that's a really good question. And I don't think there's any doubt that the credibility of central banks has been hit. You know, it's it's not surprising. Month after month, we've seen inflation getting further and further away from the 2% inflation target. So of course, financial market participants, members of the public are thinking, what are these central bankers doing? That's a little bit unfair, but I think it's definitely happening. So what might happen is that the particular definition of inflation that's being targeted might get changed. So for example, they could start focusing more on core inflation. I think that would be a bad idea because it will undermine the credibility. People don't care about core inflation. They care about all of inflation. So why should... Well, it's almost as if central bankers are cheating if they if they sort of move, get rid of the difficult things. The other thing that they could do, which you alluded to, is that they could change the actual number that they're trying to target. So at the moment, the Fed, the Euro area, Bank of England are all targeting 2%. Now, it's a little bit arbitrary whether it's 2 or 1 or 3, but what's really important is that that number is stuck to by central banks. And the real risk would be if, in the face of some difficult years, central banks say, oh, you know what, we weren't really able to hit 2%, so let's put it up to 3 let's put it up to 4 that will completely undermine the future credibility of inflation-targeting regimes. Because whenever some tough times come along, people in the market, people in firms and households will think, well, why should I believe in this 2% inflation target or this 3% inflation target? Because Last time we had a rough period, the central bank has just put the, put the rates up. So I think it's really important that the inflation target is kept 
at the level that it already is and and they don't tinker with it. That's the worst thing you can do. Peter Westaway, this was an incredible conversation as always. Thank you. And we'll be talking to you again soon for sure. Thank you very much, Brittany.